Hi friends, welcome to another one of my videos. Obviously this one is going to be related to food that I take with us camping, um, specifically dinners, uh, but also some other tips that I have that aren't related to dinners. I'll throw in there as well, um, just things that I've picked up over the last couple of years, because it's been a little while since I've put out one a video and two a video related to camping. Um, I have put out a video a few years ago related to the breakfasts and lunches, the simple breakfasts and lunches that I take with us while we are camping, but I've never done one specifically related to dinner. And the reason for that is because I haven't personally been making our dinners while we go camping for a, a few years now. Um, the last number of years, my parents have actually been coming with us and my mom graciously offered to make our dinners for us. So I jumped on that and so I haven't been making our dinners. And the reason for that was because I typically had young children with me or a nursing baby or I was pregnant, something related to that. And if you have any of those situations, you know it can be really difficult to um, do meal prep especially while you're camping because everything just takes so much longer while you're camping. It's not your own kitchen. Things are put in different areas, you know, in bins and things. So you have to go searching for things. So it can um, really be hard to, at the end of the day, do a meal like that, especially if you have a needy baby or like well, the last time I shared a video with you guys, I was pregnant and not feeling well, especially in the evening time. So this year is my first year in quite a while, and you're going to hear kids in the background some. Um, my first year in quite a while that I um, am doing our dinners, and I just want you to know that my idea of cooking while camping is to keep it as easy, um, as uh, easy, as mess-free, as um, simple, but tasty and still nutritious as possible with the least amount of cleanup. So just keep that in mind as I do these meals and show you what we um, do. Uh, so this, the way that I do it, that I'm going to be doing it this year um, is, and I've kind of already done it like I, like way long ago when I actually made our dinners before, uh, it's, it's similar to how I used to do it then. I will pre-cook as much as I possibly can while I'm at home, where I'm in the convenience of my own kitchen, can clean up the messes and all of that. It doesn't take as much time. And then I, so I'll pre-cook it, I'll put it, I would put it um, like double Ziploc bag it and then put it in the freezer and then take it up with us and just basically reheat it there. I do something, I'm doing something very similar to that this year, although it kind of got taken a step further because that's what my mom also did for us last year she pre-cooked things based on my suggestions and then she vacuum sealed them it took up less room in the um in her freezer as well as her ice chest doing it that way as well as it maintained the freshness longer and less chance of freezer burn and things like that um and then and i think i don't know if this is exactly like how a sous vide machine works or not but she heated up a pot of boiling water and then put this um vacuum sealed bag with the food in it inside the ziplock inside the boiling water and just he reheated it that way so it was all contained in the bag in a pot of boiling water and she uh just reheated it that way and it worked out great i know for like she did steaks or something like that uh, like a some type of beef and she did not cook it all the way like to temperature at home because she was assuming that it would cook more when it's being reheated and I think it did to some degree, but not to the same amount that she was anticipating it being, because I think it was more on the rarer side than like, at least what I would prefer to eat it as. I don't worry about that as much. Um, if our food is a little drier or something like that, it doesn't bother me and it doesn't bother my husband and the kids just eat it anyways. So that isn't an issue for me, but that might be something you want to consider if you try using this method. So that made it really easy because the, we didn't have like any food prep pretty much, at least for the, the protein portion of the meal. And then um, you have a pot of boiling water already. So if you had any dishes afterwards, you already have your water heated up for it. And there's like zero cleanup practically from it. So that is what I did for this year. And we went on a trip um, a road trip out to Colorado we live in Southern California we got back 10 days ago and we're leaving 
nine days ago, 10 days ago, something like that. And we're leaving in two days to go camping. So I only had 11 days in between when we got back from that trip to when we are leaving to go camping. I knew I wouldn't have time to like do a lot of the food prep portion of our camping trip. So I did that before we left on our road trip. And for the most part, I would just make a meal, double it, and then uh, vacuum seal half of it and put it in the freezer, labeled, put it in the freezer, and then that's gonna be one of our meals while we're camping. So I wasn't doing like extra work per se, other than just doubling a meal and then saving it in the freezer. So our meals are pretty much done already, um, which has been great because it's really helped out these 11 days that I've had to get ready to be a lot calmer than I ever really remember them being in the past. I also, I mean, my youngest daughter is two and a half now and the older that your littlest one gets, the easier things also get because she's so much more um, independent and can entertain herself and doesn't need mommy around all the time. So that also helps a lot um, with being able to focus on packing. So I, that's how I got it done. Um, I'm gonna show you, I think I'll pull out everything that I have in the freezer and show you what it is. And if I can, I will also show you me prepping it, at least one of the meals while we're camping so you can see how I do it. So that's the main portion of the meal. And then I'll show you also what we use, I'm using for like sides um, and also for vegetables. Um, and then, at the end of this, um, I, or somewhere in here, it may be just dispersed throughout. I'm gonna also give you some other tips on how things that I'm doing for, I know breakfast for sure. I don't know if I have any tips for additional ones for lunches other than what I've already shared in that other video. Um, and I don't know if I've already said this, but I'll put a link to the playlist down below of all my camping videos so you can check those out in case you haven't seen them or you want a refresher or whatever. Um, it'll be down there. Uh, hmm getting a phone call. I just got a phone call, so I don't remember where I was at, but anyhow, gonna share the dinners with you, gonna share some breakfast related things with you, at least one. I know I have one um, that was like, it's been like life changing, it's awesome. Um, and I don't remember if there's anything else. Oh, I have a new gadget that I wanna share with you that I got that I haven't used yet, but I'm really hopeful it's gonna work. And I think that's it. So um, let me pull stuff out and then I'll show you our dinners to um, so hopefully give you ideas on things that you could also do. Uh, and like I said, I, hopefully I'll take you along with us when we're actually camping and show you at least the prep for one of them and stuff like that. So we'll, we'll see where this all goes, but I'm taking you along for the ride. <laughs> I'm out in my garage now, that's just because this is where my list is. This is my list of food items. I've shared this in the past. I just shared this on another video I just filmed. If you're interested in that, it's about um, our equipment, kind of like an update of things that we're bringing, as well as like additional tips that I've learned over the last few years since I did my last um, like big get ready with me to go camping like video. Anyhow, um, I will leave a link to this. It's a Google Doc. I'll leave it down below for you in case you're interested in it, as well as the playlist for the other videos. I I'm, cannot remember if I already said that. So if I have, excuse me, um, short term memory here. Anyhow, I list out um, everything that we're going to need. It's multiple pages long. Um, I have a column here to say whether it's been purchased or not. I also have a column over here as to where I normally would purchase it just so that I can get it on shopping list as I need to. If there's anything that needed to be prepped for that, like um, needed to be put in a smaller bag, into a mason jar, into um, it needed to be made ahead of time and frozen, something like that, then there will be a spot in this column for me to check it off. I pretty sure I shared this before, but I will pre-make pancakes and freeze them. And that makes a super easy breakfast for people. Um, I do bring up like a skillet type thing, a flat rectangular skillet. I don't know if a skillet's the right word. Well, I think you guys know a pan, flat pan. Anyhow, we can use it to reheat things on it. Um, and so you can just quickly reheat the pancakes. Um, and then voila, I didn't have to do the mess of the pancakes or anything like that. 
or the cleanup because um, they're already done. Um, and then this last column is whether or not it's been packed. If it's highlighted in blue, that means that it's in my freezer and I need to grab it out of the freezer when I pack our ice chest. If it's highlighted in yellow, that means it's in my refrigerator and I need to grab it from my refrigerator. And then I know that if it's not highlighted at all, it's something that I still need to deal with. But over here, I just started this year doing this green highlighter to make sure that these are items that I uh, put on my last minute shopping list and make sure that they're on that shopping list so that I can buy them the day before we leave and not forget them. Um, so this is something new that I'm doing this year for breakfast. In the past, I have pre-made muffins and I make them into mini muffins. The kids seem to like those a lot more than full size ones, but I'm going even simpler this year and I am going to oh, just buy pre-made big muffins from Costco, um, so like 12 muffins, however they long they last us, they last us and that's something that's just keeping my prep work a lot easier this year instead of also having to make a bunch of muffins. Um, so that's something that I've changed for this year. Something also that I'm trying out new this year, I just got it, it just got delivered, is this um, concentrated coffee. Um, I drink decaf, and so they have it in decaf, they have it in regular, and they also have it in like caramel and vanilla, and there may have been another flavor, I can't remember. But you are only supposed to use like a teaspoon or two of this with eight ounces of water. So depending on how strong you like it and you get instant coffee that way. And the reviews are really good on it. Um, very highly like rated. I normally at home just make a big pot of con like not concentrated, but like pretty strong coffee. And then I put it in mason jars and just have it cold in my fridge and ready to be poured out. So I'm not making coffee every day. I don't have a Keurig. I don't have something that makes me like my own personal cup every day. I just have a regular old coffee pot. So I debated um, just pre-making uh, enough coffee for the week for me, but the amount of mason jars that it would take up and the space in my ice chest would be significant. And so I really didn't want to do that if I didn't have to. I just didn't want to, um, you know, bring, t take up more space than I needed to. So this was kind of a splurge. I got it through Walmart because they were the cheapest. Amazon has it. So I'll put it in my Amazon store, but check out other places too. Because uh, they were at least $6 more, I want to say, on Amazon than at Walmart. Uh, so it was kind of expensive, but it's supposed to do 30 cups of coffee. Um, a serving though is, let's see here. I don't know what they consider a serving because they said use one to two teaspoons. So who knows what an actual serving is, if that's just using one teaspoon per eight ounces, or you could use two. Uh, but it's so small. I mean, it's fitting in my hand like this. So it's not going to take that much room. I can pack it in a crate or a box or something first. They do recommend it getting refrigerated afterwards. So it'll go in an ice chest. But again, it's going to take up a whole lot less space than like six mason jars full of coffee. Um, and then that's also that many less mason jars that I have to also pack home with us. So that's something to consider as well. So I'm excited to try this out and I will hopefully let you guys know what I think about it too. Speaking of our ice chest, I did upgrade our ice chest last year. I talk about this quite a bit in my other video that I just filmed um, with like an update on our equipment and stuff that we're using this year. And so check out that video down below if you're interested in this. Um, this was an investment for me. I purchased one last year, one this year, so I didn't buy them at the same time because they are they are expensive, but um, I explain more in that video. I don't want to like rehash everything that I said in that. So um, if you're interested in a good quality ice chest, I do recommend you looking into these. Um, they are comparable to, I believe the brand is Yeti uh, that also does ice chests that are really good quality, but these were cheaper, but comparable in at least what people were saying about them. And I really do think that it's a huge um, I don't want to say lifesaver, but a huge ice saver, if you will, um, in helping me really cut back on how much ice I've had to purchase uh, to keep things cold in them. This is the new gadget that I purchased um, for this year. 
I have had a collapsible strainer. My mom bought it for me years and years ago to be able to do pasta with, but it's kind of cumbersome. It doesn't fold. It didn't fold flat. I've already donated it, so I don't have it anymore to show you. Um, and it was like a square-ish shape, um, which allowed it to be able to be collapsible and things like that. But it just never worked well, and you'd have to find like a rock or something to kind of... Um, position it on and it was never steady and then pouring the pasta in it uh oftentimes it might like tip off the rock or something and then you'd lose your dinner so i looked into this i was looking into just another type of collapsible one but then i came across this it snaps on to your pot and it's supposed to fit a variety of different sizes uh of pots so i have not used this yet but i am excited to because we are doing a pasta night and i figured this will um hopefully uh, save our pasta and it doesn't take up too much space it's not too big I mean I still have it in the box still here so I haven't opened it yet either but um, I'll let you know how this goes as well and maybe I'll even show that to you also while we're I wanted to show you this really cool strainer I actually used it last night on a different pot and it worked really really well so I have macaroni noodles in here and I'm gonna show you it just clips onto the side there it took a little bit to get it on like wiggle it a little to get it on but then it's pretty flush up against the pot edge right there um and so i'm going to show you how easy it is to strain as I pulled these dinners out from the freezer that they probably don't look the most <laughs> appetizing uh, but I'm showing you them anyways and again like I said I'm gonna try to show you um, what the what it looks like afterwards or the you know how I put it together there so we have seven nights that we need dinner for this is for four of those nights and I'll tell you about the other three in a little bit okay so this is rotisserie chicken uh, that I just got from Costco. I think it's just one chicken. It may have been two, but I think it's just one. Uh, I just pulled all the chicken off the bone, put it in here, vacuum sealed it, froze it. Voila, just needs to get heated up again. So that's great. Tonight's dinner is the rotisserie chicken. So in here I have a pot of hot water. It was boiling and I just have the whole bag of chicken still sealed and everything in there heating up. Cranky baby over there. Um, in this pan, I just have water heating up with some butter. Um, that's for the instant mashed potatoes. Um, and I just have to add milk and the potatoes and then they're done. And then I heat it up hot water here and that's going with these frozen peas that are still partially frozen. So I'm just gonna pour hot water over that and put the lid on it. And those will be ready in no time. I just like doing it that way. Um, because now I have the rest of this hot water that I can use for dishes afterwards. This is pulled pork. Again, I just doubled a meal, or actually when I do pulled pork, it always makes plenty of extra um, that we eat other nights for leftovers. So instead of having it for leftovers, I just took it, vacuum sealed it, and put it in here. I will have to say though, when I vacuum sealed this, uh, so much, like so many juices were coming out. Like I had a huge mess I had to clean up. Um, so if you do something like this and it's very liquidy just just be aware of that you might want to drain some of it out before you vacuum seal it because it it made a big mess let me tell you it was late at night i was cleaning that up not the most fun then um oh and this i just prepared uh in slow cooker and it's just um pork tenderloin with um a liquid smoke and salt and that's it. And I will bring up some barbecue sauce in case anybody wants to put some barbecue sauce on it as well. For tonight's dinner, we're having the pulled pork. So it's just here in the vacuum seal bag. I got this water up to boiling. <laughs> and I'm just gonna stick that in there and keep the water on a low heat. And I'm also gonna put the lid back on just to help with that most of the way. 
um, and then just let that heat, I don't even know for how long, um, just until the rest of dinner is ready basically. I boiled water in the kettle, which I'm now going to take over here. And I just have what was once frozen corn. I'm gonna do it exactly like the peas and just pour it till it's covered. Don't mind all the yellow jackets nearby. <laughs> and then cover it and that'll be ready when we're done or not when we're done but when we're ready to eat and the next thing i have two packets of this seeds of change um, in here along with a quarter cup of water so i'm just going to put this on a low heat mix it up put the lid on keep my eye on this until it's heated through and that's going to be it for that so pretty easy and the last thing we're having with this meal are the rest of the cornbread muffins. We have uh, barbecue sauce if anyone wants it on their pulled pork. And then also these Hawaiian rolls. People could also like make little sliders out of them like a pulled pork sandwich. And that is gonna be it for dinner, I think. Then this is teriyaki chicken thighs. So again, I just made more like twice as much as we needed one night when I was, um, gr I was grilling these out on our grill and I made sure that there's plenty of extra sauce, but I will bring extra sauce as well in case people want to add a little bit extra to theirs. I decided to put it into two bags. Um, we actually don't need this many, but at the time, my parents were coming camping with us and I was actually including my mom. My dad has a special diet, so my mom was gonna eat our meals with us for a change and instead of her making meals for us. And so I made extra Again, I just don't know how much, I don't know if I said this in this video or the other one, but I just don't know sometimes how hungry people are going to be by the end of the day, how active they were and stuff. So I like to have more than needed um, and that way people can get their fill. So I decided to put it into two bags because it was so much instead of one because I figured when we, one, it would uh, fit in the freezer better for freezing, more like a single layer. And then also when reheating it, I was hopeful that it would heat up faster than if it was all in one bag. Uh, so we're doing that. Another option that I have, um, if I wasn't doing the teriyaki chicken thighs, I would do um, barbecue chicken thighs. Thighs also tend to not dry out as much, so that's why I'm using the thighs instead of like a breast or something like that um, but this could easily be done with barbecue chicken and I have done this with teriyaki before chicken thighs before um, we went on a trip somewhere and I pre-made our meal for it and I just reheated it there and it turned out great and that I got this idea from packets that you could buy at Costco that are teriyaki chicken thighs with pineapple and the sauce and all that and you just buy it you heat it up in your microwave and voila you get a dinner and I've done that before I think camping but it's super expensive to do it that way too because I had to buy two packages of them in order to just feed our family and it was like $15 a piece or something like that it just added up quickly so um not that this much chicken isn't also expensive I didn't really price out this so well what it is it is what it is um then I have like I don't know less than half a bag of these mm, meatballs we're gonna do pasta and meatballs one night with red sauce and I counted how kind of how many meatballs are in there and it should be more than enough for us as well so I'm just gonna bring the rest of this bag so this is four of our meals I'm going to take you out to our garage and look in our dinner box and I'll show you what's gonna go with them and what our fifth meal is so here's our dinner box so anything we need for dinners I try to fit into this box. Um, there was actually extra room in here, which worked out well because I actually have a treat in here as well that wouldn't fit into the treat box. So if you see some brownie brittle in there, that's why. Um, I bring this cornbread muffin mix only for um, because of if they catch any fish, it works good as a breading, like if you wanted to bread the fish and fry it. This is something my mother-in-law just has always done, so I always try to bring up a box. It doesn't take up too much room, um, just in case that would be something that would be useful to have. Okay, oh, I also didn't have room for this huge thing of peanut butter in our lunch box, so that went in here also, as well as pickle jars didn't fit in the lunch box. So there is extra room in the dinner box. I utilized it um, and I'll just have to try to remember that that's what's in there okay so to go with obviously we have 
noodles. Um, I just want to use up that box. We actually don't have any dietary needs like that, but I have this. I didn't think it would be enough because my kids, when they're hungry, they can eat a whole pound of pasta just between the five of them. So I thought I'll just bring up this box, throw it in with it, and call it good. Um, and then I have this pasta sauce, um, and there should be another pasta sauce in here. I just Put it in the other corner so it wouldn't all have all the weight in one corner so i have two pasta sauces because i didn't think one of those would be enough um so that's obviously for our pasta night to go with that i will probably have a baguette from costco that i will slice up put in a bag and freeze and then um, we can just heat it up on that pan like I talked about with the pancakes. Um, so that will be pretty easy and then just better them and they're good to go. I like to bring up little packets of um, Parmesan cheese and red pepper flakes um, instead of like a whole container. So I'll just gather those like when we get pizza at Costco or something at the, throughout the year, I'll grab some of those and just put them in a bag to take with us. So it's taking up less space also. Um, since we're talking about things going with the meals I've already showed you, let me continue on that. So I had not used these particular um, like mashed potato packets before. I've used other ones that Costco had, but they've changed the brand that they now carry and my kids do not care for it. These ones were very highly rated. So I picked them up at Walmart, I believe. I didn't think one packet would be quite enough for us so I'm doing two uh, but people said they're really really good and this is just a way to be able to do an easy side this is probably going to go with the rotisserie chicken um, again and it doesn't take up a lot of space um, and I'm not bringing up real potatoes I'm not having to peel and cut and boil and all that this is this is what I like to do and the cleanup should be pretty easy too because of that um, then to go with the pulled pork, I have these. Also, I picked these up from Costco. I have two of them. These, normally you can just heat them up in your microwave, but if you don't have a microwave, you can uh, just put them in a pan pot, I think is how they are done. It's again, it's pretty simple. Let me see how to cook. Um, you can do it in a skillet or microwave. Okay, so you put in two tablespoons of water with it if you're doing it in the skillet, stir it and heat it up. So pretty easy, shouldn't be a big mess for cleaning up. Um, okay, so that's the side for that. For the teriyaki chicken, I don't have anything for that because since I have quite a bit of left, not leftovers, but I know I have enough that um, my in-laws who are camping with us could eat with us. I offered to let them eat that with us. <laughs> um, I, I asked if they would like to join us for that meal. And then um, my mother-in-law is actually going to make a pot of rice for us to have with that. So I don't have anything for it per se, but she will have rice that she can make and contribute to the meal that way. So we're kind of doing like a potluck meal for that. So that'll be nice. And it's one less thing that I'm bringing and one less thing that I'm cooking, which it all works out well that way. Okay. I think that was the sides for all the things I've already shown you. Now for our first night there, and this is kind of splurgy because it is not inexpensive, especially when I have to buy three of these to feed our family. But um, there was, so where we camp at Hume Lake, there is a Christian camp nearby. It's like a 10 minute walk for us from the campsite. They have a snack shop there, as well as a place you can buy pizza and other things like that in a little general store. So that's where we go and get our ice. And they, this snack shop, you can get like hamburgers, chicken burgers, hot dogs, fries, milkshakes, like a bunch of different things. Been tradition for us to go eat there on our first night there. So I'm not having to cook at all after we've just spent like the whole day traveling as well as setting up our site. However, one year they were closed. And so I had been counting on being able to eat there and we couldn't. Fortunately, my husband had told me, he, he suggested, why don't you throw in, because we had a box of like these freeze dried meals. He said, just throw in a couple packets just in case we need something, you know, um, just on the off chance something happens. It'd be a quick, easy meal. It, it would get us by. So I did. And thankfully I did because they were closed that night at the snack shop or they closed early or something for like some 
sometimes they close for like employee appreciation type things or just various reasons. And you don't necessarily know until you go over there and you find out that you're too late. <laughs> um, so thankful we had that for our first meal that night. And um, that was a couple years ago. And so uh, last year I made it a point to actually bring these for our first meal instead of counting on the snack shop because then we could go into we call it town we could go into town and see when their hours were what days they were actually me open which days they're closing early things like that and then we could actually plan to eat there on a different night um, when we knew we'd be able to make it in time and not be relying on them for one of our meals that first night so my kids actually really enjoyed this um, when we made it all you have to do is heat up like a couple cups of water or something pour it in here let it sit for like eight to ten minutes or something it's ready in ten minutes um, and then scoop it out and there you go so super easy it is super easy cleanup and my kids enjoyed it so with this I will have um, I either will do canned green beans and what I do with these is I just pour the green beans into a pot and then I pour boiling water into the pot with them and it heats them up. I don't even have to put the actual pot on the stove with them in it. I just use my kettle and get hot water and put it in that way. So I'll either use green beans for that meal or for a different meal. I also am getting a salad mix from Costco um, that my husband and I enjoy. So we'll eat that. And then I'm planning to put together tomorrow like a salad in a jar, like in a mason jar. Just cut up some lettuce, put some shredded carrots in there and put that in the ice chest and my kids will eat that they don't even like dressing on it per se um they'll just eat the lettuce and the carrots like that and that'll be their part and then again i would have i'll have a baguette to go with this from costco so that'll really be the only thing that i have to actually cook which is really just heating up some bread so that works out well but th these are not cheap they're like ten dollars a pack so for us to have three of these that's like a thirty dollar meal which is yikes but for my sanity and not having to um, actually make a meal that first day when it's just a really busy long day because we get up like at four ish something in the morning to be able to drive there to miss traffic going through LA and things like that it's worth it to us um, so that's what I have for that uh, so that's our fifth meal if you were keeping track and I said I needed seven so our six and seventh meals one is going to be at that snack shop just sometime later in the week and the seventh one is going to be at that pizza place also in town sometime during the week so um i do rely on going into town and getting meals from them as well as cooking stuff on our own and it just kind of brings a nice balance to things we're very lucky that the place we go camping has options like that and we've started utilizing them more in recent years um it just helps it to be more enjoyable and more like a vacation uh, in some ways for me as well as for everyone else um so those are my dinner ideas and hopefully i've taken you along and shown you how i've prepped some of them as well okay so the next thing i have to do and this is like my big to do for today getting us ready is to prep food in the kitchen um so i forgot to mention i've talked about the baguettes that i'm getting at costco i'm gonna pre-slice and freeze them uh but what i'm also gonna make are some cornbread muffins and those will go with uh one or two of our meals but those were that was a note that i had made from last year it was a big hit they kept well if I kept them in our ice chest and oh I'll give you another one of my little tips I use these they are half sheets like deep steam steam pan half sheets so I put these like at the top of the ice chest to keep things out of the water when water accumulates in it and that was really good for keeping the bread type items that I wanted to keep cold or cool at least and help them from going moldy, um, like pancakes, the frozen pancakes too. Um, when I was making my own muffins, the muffins would go in there. And then also I'd bring up some avocados. The avocados worked out well in there, so they weren't getting like squished and mushed, getting buried in the ice chest. Um, so those worked out really well just to kind of lay those on top and then have items in there so things could stay cold, but then also not get buried or squished unnecessarily in the ice chest. So I'm gonna be making those muffins and I'm also going to be doing what my new big tip is for breakfast. I want to share that with you. So I'll take you inside and show you what that is in just a little bit. Oh, I also make 
um, homemade chocolate chip oatmeal cookies. That is like our big treat while we're up there besides s'mores. So I will bake all of those up, put those in bags and freeze them. And then also put those in the tray too, to keep them cold. Um, so those are just kind of a fun like treat to have. If we're not doing s'mores one night, um, or we're at the lake having fun and we just want a little, you know, goodie like that. It's a great one to have. And it's also a really good one that I found to share with people that we're camping with, like just to offer them a homemade cookie. Everyone always perks up at it. So it's something that I also try to do. So that's on the list today is to make some muffins, make some cookies. And I know there's some other things too, besides packing my clothes. <laughs> I still have to do that. Um, but I'll take you inside in a little bit and show you the food stuff that I'm getting ready. Another dinner option you could do is something like, you know, tacos, obviously. Um, that's pretty easy. It doesn't have to take up um, a lot of room in an ice chest. I mean, that's something my mom always talked about was how when they went camping when they were kids, my grandma, everything was canned. She doesn't remember ever them ever really having an ice chest. Like even their milk was like powdered milk that you mixed with water and you drank that. So everything came out of a can. I mean, so um, if you were to do something like tacos, which can get kind of elaborate depending on how much you have, but I mean, use canned salsa instead of fresh tomatoes, unless you have fresh tomatoes, but that could work well. Uh, Pre-cook any meat you might want, season it, pre-cook it, bag it, freeze it, then it's just a matter of heating it up again. Or you could use something like this. Um, this is just a plant-based taco filling that I found these at Costco as well as Aldi. Um, they're very tasty, a little more pricey um, for the amount you get, but my kids don't really like taco meat in theirs. They just use refried beans and cheese and um, sliced black olives. And if we have it available, um, a fresh avocado. But this works really well if you're in a pinch or and you don't wanna take up ice chest space, so I would recommend that. Um, uh, your shredded cheese will freeze, so freeze it before you put it in your ice chest to help it stay cold or longer. The more stuff you can freeze for your ice chest, the better. The longer it'll make your ice last, um, the longer all your food will last, because um, some of it will defrost pretty quickly, like that cheese will defrost very quickly if you're able to freeze any of your milk ahead of time. I've done that in the past. I just don't have the freezer space anymore uh, to be able to freeze as much as I would like to or that I have have in the past. So um, yeah, just freezing things as much as you can. Uh, let's see what else I was going to say with tacos. Um, yeah, you know, tortillas, you could do hard shells, you don't necessarily fry tortillas while you're up there, you know, try to make it more simple. So that's always a good option. And chili from a can would be another good option. Um, I'm making the cornbread muffins right now, which are going with um, our, I think our pulled pork meal. That's what I planned for it to go with. But I mean, you could have the cornbread to go with your chili. I have made cornbread up while camping before. It was many years ago. So I don't remember exactly how I did it, but we just kind of um, did whatever we could. I had a pan that like a circular pan that I put it in like a frying pan, made a lid of some sort, it could have just been foil. But then I kind of did like a double boiler type thing, but without water in between. So I had a second pan underneath to kind of help disperse the heat. So it wasn't like a direct flame on the pan itself that had the cornbread mixed in. And it actually turned out really well. So you can apparently make cornbread on a stove um, while camping. I, I just wish I could remember exactly how I did it. I only did it that one time, but it did turn out really good. Uh, let's see. Another pretty easy one would be like chicken Alfredo. So again, a pasta, you'd have to cook the pasta ahead of time. You know, I think you can pre-cook pasta and freeze it, and then it would just be a matter of heating it up. You would just heat it up with, I would just pour boiling water again over it in a pot, and then voila. But that would take up space in your ice chest, so keep that in mind. Um, just a canned Alfredo sauce and have some pre-cooked chicken. Throw it all together. There you go. Um, I'm trying to think of any other... I said the chili. Oh, at Costco, I just saw that they had beef stew in a can, so you could also do beef stew. Um, just open up a bunch of cans, throw it in a pot, heat it up, and you're good to go. So there's there's a number of easy options. For me, it's just been a challenge finding stuff that my kids will actually also eat that's simple and you know easy for me to make and clean up 
and they'll actually eat it. So th these are the meals that I'm showing you today are the ones that they will eat. And it's um, progressed over time. Um, they were definitely more picky earlier on, so, which always makes it harder. You know, you already have young kids, which is hard enough to camp with. And then you have pickier eaters. So they've definitely developed their taste more over the years. So that's helped a lot too. I just wanted to make sure that I gave more ideas to you also, not just the few that I am doing for this trip right now. Um, but I got to go back in the kitchen and keep keep prepping this food or it's never going to get done if I keep talking to you. So I'll bring you in there, like I said, in a minute um, to share what I've done and what I'm doing. All right, cornbread muffins just came out of the oven. I just use the Christie's muffin mix, makes it super easy. Um, so I'll take the wrappers off when they cool off and then put them in baggies, um, Ziplocs, and then they'll probably end up in my fridge, not my freezer, just because of lack of freezer space. Otherwise I could freeze them as well. So those are good. I am back here. I have <laughs> back here butter sitting out to be able to uh, make cookies with a little later so those are getting soft but in the meantime i am currently working on uh, making scrambled egg mix and this is my big thing that i wanted to share with you in this video um i thought the dinners would be it but this is really something that i'm very excited about um so last year my brother came up camping with us for the first time, him and his family. And he did some research on how to make um, camping easier and just different things like that. So one of the things he came across, he was wondering how to like transport eggs. And so he found that you can pre-crack the eggs, put them in a jar and then freeze them and they'll you can use them then later. And I was like, that is a great idea because then you don't have to worry about eggs cracking. Um, they are more compact that way if they're in a jar and it fills up the whole jar. Um, again, it's another thing to keep your ice chest cold, um, frozen eggs. And so I was like, oh, that's a great idea. I'm going to do that too. But then I took it a step further and I said, well, if I'm already going to crack these eggs, I might as well scramble them, add seasoning, whatever else I do to make scrambled eggs. And then that way, when I'm up there camping, all I have to do is open up the jar, pour it in the pan and cook it. And it's good to go. Cause remember my idea with food related things with camping is to make it as easy, as simple as possible with the least amount of cleanup. And so to me, that was like, that's what I'm going to do. And I did it and it was awesome. And I'm never not doing that again. Cause it was like one of the best things I could ever do. Um, as far as making breakfast even easier in the morning, um, cause even like my kids would then be able to, if, if I needed them to, cause they, some of them know how to cook scrambled eggs, they could just easily open up the jar, pour it in the pan and cook it also. So that was like in a way a game changer for me for breakfast. So right now I am doing three batches of it. So, um, for our family of seven, I'm doing 18 eggs for each batch. Um, and I'm doing them individual batches because then I know exactly how much goes in a single batch into the mason jars. And then I can just pull out the mason jars that I know I need um, when it's time to make that breakfast. So for me, I just have the eggs in here. I use an immersion blender. I just think that's the easiest thing. I love having it. Um, I do have a stand mixer over there, um, but for me, this is easier and faster than using the stand mixer, but that's always an option or a whisk or a fork, whatever you have. So I've already whisked up the eggs and put in, I just, I grew up, my mom put in seasoned salt for the seasoning for us. So that's what I do for us still. And then I added in uh, milk. I'm using oat milk, but any type of milk. I know some people use like heavy cream and heavy whipping cream or half and half or something like that too. And they say it makes it fluffier too. So um, this is my second batch. I have one more set of eggs over there to go through. I'm about to pour this into, so it fits into this mason jar plus this size mason jar, which I don't know what size this one is. This is a quart. I don't know that it's a pint. But I don't see any markings on it either. Anyhow, I'll, I'll put it next to it so you can see the difference. Maybe it is a pint. That looks about half right? Two cups worth possibly. So for my eggs, plus the little bit of milk that I add in fits in these. So I know now when it's time to make the meal or the breakfast, grab one of these, grab one of these, and it's good to go. And that will be our breakfast for that day. So that makes um, three of our breakfasts really easy. And we can actually have a hot breakfast with minimal effort involved while we're there. 
Don't forget to also leave some room at the top of your mason jars for expansion if you are going to freeze these. Um, I'm going to try to if I can find room in my freezer because that'll make it last longer. So if you're not going to freeze them, I do not recommend doing this until like if you can the day before or the day of you're packing up your ice chest uh, just so that the eggs will last longer. Uh, at the very least, I need to get two sets of these frozen. We can use one at the very beginning of the week and then the other two will have time to thaw out and be used later in the week because um, otherwise your eggs will go bad. Uh, I, I've i had an experience with that, although it, it, it was a couple weeks until I realized that it, they were no longer good, I think, a week and a half maybe. Um, so just wanted to say that there's this... Um, like foamy stuff at the top and I think that's just because of my immersion blender adding in air and say hi Ivy you take a picture okay click <laughs> are you are you feeding your among us I see it Is that so yummy? I did take a picture. I'm doing a video. I'm taking a video. Mm -hmm. Not yet. Okay. Um, back to this. I don't remember if there's something else I was going to tell you. Other than leaving room, if you're freezing it, good idea to freeze it. Um, yeah, that's all I got right now. While I'm working on cleaning up this mess over here, I have a pot on the stove with some carrots and I'm actually gonna be cooking some carrots. Now I know I just told you that um, I reserve carrots for lunchtime, typically. However, two of my kids um, recently got braces on and so they can't eat um, hard carrots. Uh, very easily unless they're cut up into smaller pieces, which I am going to have available. I have some bags of frozen raw carrots that I just got from like Walmart. Uh, so I'm going to bring those up so they could munch on those if they wanted the raw ones. But then I also wanted to have some cooked ones for them just in case they would like to have that instead just to make it easier on them for while they have their braces. Um, and then something else I just remembered. I told you I know with the salad in the jar that my kids don't really eat salad dressing. Well, a couple of them do at times. They don't always, but they have. So I just poured some in this little mason jar to take with us. And the tip I wanted to share with you was to label your jars, if you're using them, uh, before you put them in your ice chest and before they get cold. I wish I had remembered this before I put the scrambled eggs into the freezer. I just tried and I couldn't get the masking tape to stick because the lid was already too cold. So um, do this because then as they're in your ice chest, you don't have to lift everything up to see what it is. You can just read it off the top and that helps also with having to dig through your ice chest. So don't do what I did. <laughs> Label them first and then you can get them cold and they should hopefully stick um, even after they get cold. If they don't, I'll let you know and we'll have to come up with a different solution. But um, it's just super helpful to have things labeled in your ice chest as well. I wanted to mention too, when we're not going to be doing a hot breakfast, um, I'm going to be relying on hard boiled eggs for us. So I won't be bringing up any eggs that aren't already in that scramble egg mixture. Um, so it'll just be the scrambled egg mixture for the hot breakfast and then all the other breakfasts we will have these eggs available um, for protein as well as the muffins, Costco muffins and um, cereals. Uh, just quick easy things that we can eat um, in the morning time. So my kids used to not eat these. Some of them eat them more now. So now it's a better option for us. So I'm just going to buy a box of these at Costco and bring them up with us. And that's what we'll have for the rest of our breakfast. In case you're curious about our pancakes that I pre-made and froze, and I did that last weekend, um, and I just had some of them available for us to eat right away and the rest of them I just put in the freezer so that's how I fit that into the schedule of making things ahead of time. Um, I just make these protein pancakes um, as is. I do use um, almond milk instead of water and I do add eggs so 
I made up a couple bags of these worth of pancakes. And then I also have pumpkin pancakes, but what I do, I don't just use this mix. I actually use one pouch um, of this protein pancake mix and one pouch of this pumpkin spice cake mix or bread mix. I put those together and then I follow the directions for both um, for making pancakes. So for the one pouch that I use out of here, I use five eggs and five cups of milk. Again, I'm using almond milk. And then for this one, I think it's a single egg per pouch and like one and a half cups of milk. Again, I'm using almond milk and then the egg. So I, I combine what you need for each of those for each of their individual recipes for making um, pancakes and I put them together and then that way we're getting the flavor of the pumpkin and the sweetness from it too because these don't really have much sweetness to them at all on their own. Um, but then we're also getting the protein from this. So that's a way that I've um, made these pancakes and majority of my kids like the pumpkin pancakes. Um, they would prefer it if I made these with, most of them would prefer it if I made these with chocolate chips in them, but we're trying to get away a little bit more from sugar. I also on these will make a berry syrup. Um, it's just berries that I reduce down on my stove in a pot and then put in mason jars. So if I can, I will bring some of that with me um, to put on this. So, sorry, dishwasher's running. Um, so that's like the syrup for this. At least that's what I eat. My husband will eat it or he'll put yogurt on or he'll put fruit on it. I, I will bring up some syrup just in case for the kids and stuff, but that's generally how we eat them. Um, not my kids, my husband and I. Uh, um, like banana or we'll get um, fresh fruit from a local fruit stand while we're up there and like we'll have peaches and stuff and those go really well on it. Uh, so that's that's what I use um, to make our pre-made pancakes. This is that berry syrup that I make. Um, I just forgot to mention also that if you're interested in how I do this, I do have a highlights reel on my Instagram that showed me making this once. So if you're interested in that, um, go check it out there. I'll leave my Instagram handle below. It's been a few hours, so that butter is definitely soft. Um, I'm going to be making those cookies soon. Um, in the meantime, I did pack my clothes, so that was good, and had a little break and ate. Uh, I cut up a pineapple that we had um, that needed to be cut up. Normally, I would bring a pineapple with us and eat it at the end of the week um, because I am convinced that when you buy a pineapple at the store, you should let it sit on your counter for a week and then cut into it because it actually ripens more and becomes sweeter that way. So if I buy a pineapple right before we go up and then it doesn't have to be in the ice chest it can just be in a bin or something a crate and then I cut it up at the end of the week and then we still have fresh fruit at the end of the week that I didn't have to have an ice chest anyhow I had bought a pineapple over a week ago and just never got around to cutting it up so it needed to get cut up so I did so this is going to end up in our ice chest not ideal for how I normally do it but it will work out because then we'll have fresh fruit already cut up ready to go for lunch or whenever when we want it. Um, I've also been working on cutting up um, this, these sausage links. I had three of these, so I have one left to cut up. I just wanted to show you it in the packaging first. Uh, we rely on, for our lunches, which I know I haven't talked about much of, for lunches, and I, but I did talk about this in another video that I shared our lunch and breakfast ideas with you. Um, but for lunches, we rely on sandwiches and then meat, cheese, and crackers. Uh, so this is the meat for the meat, cheese, and crackers lunches. And I pre-cut it, put it in Ziploc bags, so one link goes in each bag, and then I freeze these. And that, um, and then for the cheese, I also, I cut up, um, two pounds, a little over two pounds, because I had a whole two pound block, plus I had a partial, so I cut off some of that just to fill up the rest of the bag. And so I have two quart size bags of cheese cut up and these, it's kind of like making your own Lunchable basically is what it turns into. Um, so these will not go in the freezer because then they will crumble afterwards um, as they defrost. Uh, shredded cheese is fine, but cheese like this you don't want to freeze. This will go in the freezer. And then this will make it a really simple grab and grow um, lunch for us if we just want to get out and get doing something instead of like making sandwiches that day. So I tried to plan it that the days that we aren't trying to get out and do something like on a timetable, those are the days we'll do sandwiches. And then the other days when we need something quick and easy, I just have to pull these out of the ice chest, grab some packages of 
crackers, fruit, baby carrots, we're good to go. Um, I also wanted to point out, I do keep the cheese, and you saw the meat too, very organized like this because I feel like it um, packs better in your ice chest, for one. And two, there's less chance of it, um, like especially the cheese, crumbling on you. If it's packed in here nice and good and tight um, and not just like haphazardly where pieces like the corners can get chipped off and things like that, um, this maintains its shape a whole lot better than if I were to just throw all the cheese in there. Uh, so I like to, I just cut them up in stacks and then just layer them in here and that's good to go. So I just wanted to show you that, that that's what our lunches are. That's what I'm prepping right now. Um, then I need to check my list and see what else there is besides the delicious cookies that still need to be made. A lunch idea for when we're just at the site and not like out and about doing adventuring is um, for the kids, just some macaroni and cheese. And then over here, I'm making, it's hot, um, chicken and cheese quesadillas for my husband and myself. And I'm just using the leftover rotisserie chicken from last night. And I'm gonna shred up some of that, put it in there with some cheese and heat it up on a skillet. Um, and then I have some chips and salsa to go with it. And that's a nice um, meal for while we're here at the camp. All right, well, the cookies are just about done. I have one more batch in the oven, um, just Cookie. waiting. Cookies. Uh -uh. Uh, no, 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 no. The family, cookie. yes, cookie. the family has already enjoyed them tonight. I'm going to call it a night here now that the cookies are done and I'll pick up the rest of the stuff tomorrow. All right, so it's about a quarter to three the next day, the day before we leave, and it's definitely feeling like crunch time. Um, I already did things this morning. I went to Costco, did my last minute shopping and all of that, got the food going. Um, but now I am ready to fill up the ice chests. Uh, I got the first one in the van, so I wanted to kind of show you how I do it a little bit, um, or at least how I'm going to do it this time, and then also show you what it looks like with it actually filled up. And my goal is to kind of separate foods as far as like dinners and things will go in one ice chest, breakfast will go in another ice chest, and I'm not really sure where like lunch related items are going to go yet, but we'll figure that out um, and then like other various things. But I, at least if I can have those two things separated, I can know like, okay, when it's like, if I need to tell someone to go get something, I'll know either get it out of the white ice chest or get it out of the teal ice chest. And that is one reason why I wanted to have two different colored ice chests um, was for this specific reason to be able to differentiate between them um, so I can put different things in and then also direct people to them as well as we needed to. So let's get moving. So here's the first ice chest in the van, and I have our table that we've started bringing up. Last year was the first year we brought up a table. Um, there, in between those two seats, because there is a walkway there, and this just helped um, things not fall forward onto kids. So that was one of the barricades that I used. Anyhow, so I believe I think I'm going to make this our dinner ice chest and see how much that gets fills up, filled up, and then probably lunch stuff will go in there as well. So that's what I'm working on right now. So I have my list here. And I'm just gonna go run down it, grab everything uh, that I need to out of here. I'm gonna throw it in this bin that I have right here and then lug it out to the car. So that's kind of how I'm managing this portion of it. I wanted to show you what I ended up doing with the salad that I told you I was gonna make. I kept saying a salad in a jar, which is what I was intending to do. However, I thought I'd look it up online and see what the best way to do it was. And this one person said that she does salads in a jar, but she vacuum seals them. I guess she has some special attachment on her food saver machine that can vacuum seal um, mason jars. And I don't have that attachment. <laughs> so I thought, well, next best thing is I do have these Ziploc type uh, vacuum seal bags. So I put it in here, I, I washed it, uh, dried it fairly well, and then took the air out. So hopefully this will keep it fresh. I mean, it only has to last a couple days. I can't remember exactly. We may even be eating this tomorrow night, so it really doesn't have to last that long, but hopefully it'll keep it nice and not starting to go brown. I wanted to show you how things fit before I cover it with cubed ice. And this one, ew, just tripped, um, is all of our, well, not all of our, a lot of our breakfast items. Um, I only was able to fit in two blocks of ice and I have them 
standing upright. There's one here and there's one right back there. I have two gallons of milk there, one gallon of milk in that corner. I have two um, like normal sized jugs of orange juice down here. When we started camping, one, we didn't have as many people, um, so we didn't go through as much. Two, um, we would not like bring orange juice and like that and I would probably not have brought so much milk. My kids would have just had to get by with water. However, um, because two of my kids have braces on, uh, especially one of them, she's having a really hard time eating food um, just because of the pain it's causing her. So I need to have more options for her. And so I have those like carnation um, breakfast drink packets that you just milk with, mix with some milk. So I want to make sure I have plenty of milk available so that she can have those every day if she needs to, just to be able to eat something. Um, at the general store in town, we could buy more milk. It is just so expensive. So if I have the room to buy, like bring it with us, I'm going to. Um, so yeah, so then we have yogurts, pancakes that I had pre-made and frozen. Um, I have a berry syrup down there. Oh, all the eggs. Um, this is how they look when they're frozen. You can see that foamy stuff is just a lighter color at the top. And when I make these, I just shake them up really good and then I pour them into the pan. Um, so that'll also help since those are very frozen, that'll help act as more ice, even though I couldn't get that a third block in here, which I was kind of hoping to. I had bought enough so that I could have three in this one, three in the white version of this, and then um, two in the, our last ice chest, but it just is what it is. It's all a guessing game, how it's all gonna fit. So breakfast is there. And then I have, as you can see, I made that our dinner and lunch one, and that actually worked out pretty well. Um, and I tried to make it so that dinner is actually on this side and lunch is on this side for the most part. And uh, so I it fit really well, all of that stuff in here. So I just need to cover it with the cubed ice and it's pretty much good to go. And then I will woo, work that table lean down. I thought it was gonna follow me, but it didn't. Um, I will work on our third ice chest and that's gonna be set up right on top of this one. So, almost there. Here's the final ice chest. I got the three. I got three blocks in here, and I was only counting on getting two. But I thought if I could fit it in, might as well. I've already bought it, and then that way I could always move a block out of this one, put in one of the other ones if um, there's space in there, and I can fit it in just to keep that stuff colder. Because the things in here need to be cold, but not as cold as the other stuff. Um, so I have like just miscellaneous. Uh, vegetables, cornbread muffins. On the side there, I have the chocolate chip cookies. I have one more bag there to put on top. The hard boiled eggs are right there. This will also be, oh, I have grapes and I have cut up pineapple. Um, it'll also be what we call our drink cooler. So I have like one drink fit in there. <laughs> um, just so my husband, and I, I do too, but my husband really likes to have like a cold sparkling water um, in the afternoon. And so this way we have room, well, we should, will eventually have room in here to be able to put more drinks. But for now, I'm just trying to get as much ice in here as possible just to help it last as long as possible before I have to buy more because this is the ice chest I would have to buy more for. And also it, it helps that this is a cooler that, again, it's not as critical to stay cold because I can kind of fudge on the ice on this one, uh, keep moving things into the other coolers. And then even if it's just like cold water, that works for cooling off drinks too. So, or like icy water basically. Um, so that's what's in here. I'm gonna put some cubed ice in here as well and then call it good. But maybe I'll, maybe I'll try getting this in the car before I put the ice in there, before I put more weed in. All right, wish me luck on this one too. <laughs> The ice chests are finally filled and loaded in the car. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. I hope the tips I gave in here were helpful, the things that I showed you and the things I've learned over the years. Um, if you have any great, easy camping meals that you wanna share, please leave those down in the comments below. That would be great. I like reading things from you guys and I'm sure other people would really appreciate it as well. Um, I do, so, Two years ago, I filmed footage while we were camping, but I have yet to share that footage with you because I either ran out of memory space on my card or the battery on my camera died. I can't remember what it was. Anyhow, something happened. I never ended up finishing those videos, but I have this footage 
and it's mostly about um, how to go camping with young children like babies and toddlers and like things that I do to help make it a little bit easier um, and I do want to still share that with you guys hopefully I'll get that footage out to you on the sooner side than later um, but I just I'm not sure when that's gonna happen but uh, that will hopefully be the next videos that you see um, if I can get those finished otherwise thank you so much for watching and like I said I hope this was helpful and I will see you when I see you. Bye.